Hey there, roguelike fans. We're back today with another Caverns of Zaskazian 1 video, but this is Caverns of Zaskazian 1 version 2-ish. I say 2-ish because the truth is I don't know what exact version number it would even qualify as. Um, I wasn't keeping track of version numbers back then. Uh, the, as I mentioned in the previous videos, the internet was in a fledgling state. I had no intentions of ever uploading this, or, or even any understanding of how I could upload this for others to play. So I was making it basically for myself to play, and maybe a few friends, so I didn't bother with things like version numbers. But I think unofficially I was thinking of this as version number two. Um, before we dive in, I'm going to get a few things out of the way. The first is to say that of all the five versions of Caverns of Escazium 1 that we will take a look at to see its evolution, this is my least favorite. Uh, the reason being, it is still a DOS-based version of the game like the previous version we saw. But in addition to making some strides in terms of gameplay and some strides in terms of graphics, it also made some strides in terms of audio. But it made those strides in an audio environment that was DOS-centric. Back then, getting sound to work and stuff was... You had to do backflips as a, as a programmer to get things to work. And it only worked with select hardware, select software. You had to have the right drivers. And the bottom line is, I don't even understand this shit now. Uh, but when we run the game now, you'll see... Most of the sound effects are missing. I don't know if you can... Well, you can see. Uh, if you look right here... Uh, you bleed... You bleed uh, dot VOC. Uh, the VOC files were voice... Fi were, were audio files. So I know for a fact that uh, this game had audio files. And you will hear those audio files when we get to the next version of the game. Because I think they're still around. That particular audio file was... You bleed now. It was me basically saying, you bleed now. Um, and it was, uh, I think I think the game used a lot of my voice uh, to add some humor to the game uh, when you were playing. But we won't hear any of that. There's still a bit of uh, a bit of DOS PC sound, you'll hear, but uh, most of the, all the other audio files are missing. So it sounds very bare bones and weird. Um, let us, uh, let's start it up and then we'll talk a bit more as we go. Um, how do we do, uh, COX for Caverns of Zeskazian. Let's just move this aside. You can see we're still using the same basic title screen, still no version number. Um, and because of this title screen, because of this exact font, if you'll take note of this font, this is how I know that this version of the game was one of the last versions I worked on before we hit something that was sort of a dark period. And the reason was this. I, I've mentioned in other videos, I have no programming um, tutelage. I haven't really, I've never, never taken a class. Everything I've learned, I've learned from books or from sitting down with a compiler and starting to type things and seeing what happens. It's been trial and error. And that means there are large gaps in my knowledge base, including the following gap. I didn't know when I was programming caverns on the Borland, in the Borland C++ environment, that the Borland C++ environment was any different than any other environment. I thought it was a, a standardized, I thought C++ was a standardized language across all platforms. Um, and therefore, when I eventually had to move beyond Borland C++, uh, because I went from DOS to a Windows environment, when I finally moved beyond Borland C++ and bought myself a Microsoft Visual Studio compiler, I was baffled as to why the game wouldn't compile. And it would be... There was, there was a period of several years where the game was just abandoned because I didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know what was wrong. Um, and it wouldn't be until my friend Jeff Schiller intervened, and we'll talk about that in the next uh, set of with the next upgrade of the game. Uh, he intervened to sort of salvage my ability to continue working on the game, and that's when it continued. So there was a period of a, I don't know how long. I, I would have thought it was about four or five years in my memory, but it might have been as little as two. Um, this particular version of the game came from somewhere in the 2001 to 2004 region. In the file folder, we see we see files that are as old as 1998. But I think that's because I used a sound file that I had created for a different game and I stuck it in here. Um, but some of them are 2001, some of them are 2002, 2003, and the executable is listed as 2004. So I think the basic gameplay you're going to see here is circa 2001 through 2003-ish, uh, with probably some bug fixes that took us over the line to 2004, perhaps. And uh, that was just before I stopped working on the game for a long period because because uh, I couldn't. Okay. All of that's out of the way. Let's dive into the game, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see this version. I don't know how many videos we're going to get out of this particular version of the game. This looks familiar, doesn't it? Um, once again, just use your number pad to go up or down. Whoops, make sure number locks on. Whoops, fuck. Num locks on. Yes. Oh, are we in the right box? Num locks on. All right, there we go. Let's enter the caverns. Let's call our dude Jeff. Let's just keep it uh, standardized. There we go. A lot of the stuff you see here is very much identical to what we already saw. Let's just cover it again briefly. 
Strength, dexterity, intelligence, health, all started as 3 and 12. Strength governs how much gold you can carry. Dexterity, how well you hit in combat. Intelligence, how many spell points you get. Health is your hit points. Your weapon is always a dagger to start. Just 1 to 4 damage. You start with no armor. The only thing we're seeing additional here to what was here before, what wasn't here before, is the character level. It does now mark your character level. Uh, it didn't do that in version 1.13, the last version of the game we played. You can also see over here, we've had a bit of a graphical update. We are no longer using a, a white block to represent our character. It is instead this um, little animated dude with two frames of animation. Um, all the monsters, etc., are no longer letters. They have little graphics with two frames of animation. Uh, the mouse is still unused in any capacity, so we can walk around. But uh, it will be relatively silent, except for a few cases that, for some reason, it mixed both PC sound and uh, and VOC files, I guess, or or uh, various files um, to make sound effects. This is a grubbling. Um, that's another thing that changed in this version. For version 2-ish versus version 1.3. 1.13, pardon me, which we played last. The original version of the game had only 30 monsters. By the time we hit version 2, there are 60 monsters. We've doubled the number. Also, when we were doing our Let's Play of 1.13, we mentioned the fact that none of the monsters had special abilities. That wasn't entirely true. A uh, few of them could cause poisoning, as an example. So there were some special abilities. And certainly the 30 monsters I added in at this point, a lot of them had special abilities. Now, the special ability of the Grubbling is really uh, not much of a special ability, but I'll show it to you. Here we are. See, no sound in the fight. Isn't that sad? The little word key beneath it misses right down here is to remind you to press any key to dismiss this. Anytime you see the word key in brackets, it means press a key. Oh, it's not even called a grubbling. It's called a halfling back now. Okay, it was a halfling in this uh, version of the game. This version, this monster still exists in Caverns of Zaskazian 2. It doesn't work quite the same way. It's worth experience now, but uh, it was called a, it's called a grubbling now. Um, its experience value back then was zero. That's the only uh, special thing about a halfling. It's, uh, it's fast, so it's faster than you. It has one attack, so it has one in ten chance of hitting you for one damage. It always only has one health, but it's not worth any experience. So it's a, it's just a pain in the ass monster because you can't get anything out of it. Versus the kobold, we recognize them as a kobold from, we saw them in version 1.13. If you haven't seen the previous game, previous version of the game, I recommend you take a look at it because it'll at least explain the uh, circumstances. And yes, uh, we mentioned in, in version 1.13, it doesn't tell you how much experience value monsters are worth. It does now, so there's a small upgrade to the game. There are some other upgrades that we are definitely going to touch on in a minute, but let's just keep walking around. That is an imp. An imp, if it uh, hits you, can teleport you to a random location. That's his special ability. Oh, silent game. How you break my heart. Oh my god, so we have a 30% chance of hitting it every turn. We're not hitting it for some reason. It has a 10% chance of hitting us. Thankfully it's not hitting us. Oh yeah, there we go, we got it. Alright, so the grub... Uh, grubbling. Halfling is dead. That's good. Let's move on down here and see what we can see. Those sound effects, if you can hear those clicking noises, are not the sound effects of the game. That is my cat being a bed troll. For some reason, once in a while, she likes to lay down on the ground and claw at the bed for no discernible reason. Let's step on the imp. So it doesn't tell you their special abilities here. Again, it would have been in a, a document that accompanied the game, but that document doesn't seem to exist here either. There's no no documentation for this game that I can find. Use the numpad to move. Press 5 to pass your turn. We hit it for 1 damage. 3 more damage, it'll be dead. Let's keep moving. Oh, good, it's dead. It was worth 2 experience. Here's a kobold. Kobold is slow, so we can put some distance between it. Well, we look, let's use our old tactic. Let's look around for potions and stuff and see if we can... Uh, get anything so we can uh, approach the game proper. That's gold now. No longer looks like a little yellow thing. The um, That's a door. There are doors in the game now. Uh, certain monsters can't pass through doors, and they well, I guess they don't block line of sight. That's a heavy door to our right. You need to... It rolls 1d10, or picks a number from 1 to 10, I think, and if it's equal to or less than your strength, you can pass through the door. Otherwise, as you see, you hear me trying, it doesn't work. Um, but you can just keep trying. So we're starting to see some of the ideas that will evolve later on and continue into the, the genre later, the, the series later. That is a mage potion. When we drink that, we will get all our spell points back. With that in mind, let's go blast this kobold with a magic missile. And cast our first spell and see a new feature of the game here too as well. You still press C to cast a spell. C. But 
in version 1.13, there were nine spells. You kept, you pressed C, you pressed the numbers one through nine to cast a spell. In version two-ish, there are 26 spells, each corresponding to a letter of the alphabet. To cast it, you press the letter C, and then press the first letter of the spell you want to cast. Now you can see right over here, some of the spells are listed in white, some are listed in gray. Um, I'm assuming I, I remember this correctly, because uh, this basic feature continues into the game today in modified form, but the basic feature is still in place today, so I'm assuming it's this one, what we're seeing. You don't start with knowledge of every spell anymore. You actually have to find a spell laying in the dungeon. It looks like a little piece of paper. If you step on it, you gain the spell, and then it gets added to your spell book, and from then on you're allowed to cast a spell. But for now, we start with the game with the same, same spells we had access to in the original game. We can cast Magic Missile, which does 1 to 4 damage, I assume, still, for 1 ma spell point. We can cast Heal, which will, I assume, still heal 1 to 4 health for 2 spell points, or cast Cure for 3 spell points, which will cure our poison if we're ever poisoned. Let's cast Magic Missile by pressing M. There you go, there's still some sounds left. It's not dead, but what do we... Oh, is it dead? Yeah, maybe it is. I didn't even notice. Uh, let's not pick up that gold yet, because again, you can only carry as much gold as 10 times your strength. And the gold you find, I assume, is not yet keyed to the level of the dungeon. I assume it's just a flat 1 to 10. Uh, but we can do this. Let's step on the health potion. In the past, I would have said, don't do that. In 1.13, you don't step on that health potion until you need it. But now, at least it prompts you. Do you want to drink it? If you press any key other than yes, it assumes you mean no. Which is indeed what we meant. There is a thing to our right. Do we want to pick it up? It's a weapon. It's an armor. It is a map. Or it's a booby trap. No telling which. I don't think we need it yet. It could be a map, and that might help us, but what do we really care about that? I think the monsters are mostly dead on this level. So we can walk around with some degree of impunity. Um, and I don't want to grab it in case it's like a slide trap and we miss out on treasure we can find on this, this level. Um, there is a bit of a clicking sound. I don't know if that's registering for you, if it's loud enough to register for you. I can hear it in my, in my ears. I believe that is the... Like the the calls to to the functions to to use to play sound files, and because the drivers aren't there, it's it's like the the process is malfunctioning. We're getting that clicking sound. We can still hear the PC sounds wherever that existed, but the uh, audio files are just not going to work. If I uh, if we if we do do a second version of this game, a second round of this game, I may try pumping the CPU cycles up because it feels like it's a bit uh, stiff on me right now. I've just left the CPU cycles at base, which is three thousand. And it feels like it's really having a hard time moving. Stiff, it feels stiff to me. That's the staircase now. New graphic. Um, yeah, the uh, the original 1.13, you saw graphics in the sense that the title screen had that sword, and there were a little, like, the gold and potions had sort of graphics. They weren't ASCII symbols at any rate. But they weren't true graphics. The way those graphics were manufactured, in fact, the way the, this... Uh, the wall is still, still. Uh, pardon me. The walls here are still manufactured. Is with a call to a Borland function. There were actually functions like rectangle, or oval, and you would call the function and give it parameters to say what color you wanted that rectangle or oval, and whether you wanted it, uh, you know, um, filled or hollow or checkered. And that's how all 100% of the graphics in Caverns of Zeskazia in version 1.13 were made. By the time we hit this version, I've obviously started making little uh, graphics. But even then, I mean, I used to do things the hard way. It, it, it's no known graphics format. I made my own graphics format, and I made my own art program. I didn't know how to use, like, well, I knew how to use Photoshop, but I, I, maybe, maybe I didn't. Um, but if I did, I wouldn't have known how to incorporate those graphics into the game in a 16-color game, 640 by 480. So I made my own equivalent of Photoshop, which was keyboard-operated only. <laughs> Um, and you could draw pixel by pixel little monsters and stuff like that and save them as graphics and then I would load them in. Um, so these were personally made for me in my own graphics format. I think I called it the SIN, dot S-I-N, or SIN graphics. Oops, I stepped in a pool. Great! I guess there's pools now. <laughs> uh, the pool poisons you. So uh, there's a, that's one problem with the game, of course, is that you can find things in the game and you won't know what they do. Later versions of the game will rectify that, where you'll be able to figure out what is this possibly going to do. The pool doesn't necessarily poison you. It can have many different effects, but one of them is poisoning. We have a cure spell, but we can't cast it yet because we don't have uh, three spell points. But if we get over to that purple potion... There, you see we're still dropping one health every ten turns. Let's get to the purple potion right before we step on it. Let's cast heal... 
Get back a little bit of health. Let's step on the purple potion. Let's drink it. Potion restores spells. Okay, press a key. Let's press C and then cure. Okay. And, uh... Man, I definitely got to raise the cycles here. I'll have to look up how to do that. I know you can put max cycles uh, for DOS box. I know how to do that. But I, I don't remember how to just raise it part way. Oh, there's a coffin now. So we could open that coffin. Inside would be, I think, some forms of treasure. It could be booby-trapped, I believe. And it could contain um, a monster. Like an undead monster. Let's come back and get that when we're almost done the level so that we don't, uh, so that we don't screw ourselves over. If there's like some monster in there we don't want to fight, we, we have to run. I'm assuming that's the case. That's kind of the way it works now. Again, with no documentation and no um, no way to determine that in-game at this stage of the development. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I'm only marginally more well-informed than you would be. My god. Okay, right after this level, we're going to stop and make a second video where we are going to... Uh, Fix the cycles, because I'm feeling I'm moving so slow, it's it just hurts. That also might be a function of the missing sound files. Like, it might be trying to play them, and that's causing some sort of glitch. I don't even know. Let's not open this yet. Let's grab this gold. Oh, my God. That white cross thing is what the temple looks like now. We, uh, I guess gold still picks up as soon as you step on it. You don't have a, you don't have a query to see if you want to pick that up. It's just automatic. Oh dear God, you're moving slowly, my sir. Let's get over to this temple. Deposit the gold. Oh, I miss the sounds. Drive me nuts. Okay, come on. Okay. Pressing the keys fast. Okay. Get that other gold up there. We don't need this uh, health potion yet, so we're not going to grab it yet. It still works the same way, I think, at, at this stage, and probably for a long while, maybe always through Caverns 1, that there's a, a single health potion on every single level of the game. Um, with the possible exception of pre-made games called Legendary Lands, they, I don't think, have necessarily health potions. Maybe not layers, either. I think layers, if you enter layers in this version of the game, there's no, uh, no health potions in those, necessarily. They could be randomly, but there's not a guaranteed health potion. All right, let's grab the... Oh, let's go explore over here to the right first. Fuck, man, we gotta... I gotta fix this cycle thing. I mean, I could try max cycles. Maybe that'd be good, but I don't know. I don't know how the game would interpret that or if it would make the game unplayable or what. I have no idea. But it sure is moving slowly. Oh, I, I guess we want the uh, sword. In case it's weapon or armor, and then in case we open the coffin and it hurts like there's a monster in it. If it's a booby trap, we can always grab that health potion. Leather armor, okay. That's good. Already doing better in armor department than we were in the uh, the 1.13 game. Come on, man. This is painfully slow. Let's open the coffin. Yes. We find 30 gold pieces in there. And that appears to be it. Just straight up 30 gold pieces. Okay. Fuck. Let's go dump that in the temple, go to the stairs, click down to the next level, and we will quit out for now, and I will see if I can fix this, uh, this painful movement with, by repairing, um, DOS box, or changing the parameters of DOS box. It feels like it's slowing down even more than it was before. I could be wrong about that. Oops. To open a door, you don't have to press any key, you just walk through it. You can step on it. Certain monsters can't. That's about the only thing doors do. It still uses only this one format to create the dungeons. It still uses no AI for pathfinding. Just uh, monsters just charge you. Let's descend the stairs. Yes. Okay, here we are. I'm going to quit and save and stop the recording. And then we'll see what we can do about DOS. Bye. Quit. Quit to DOS. Stop recording. Bye.